Good evening everyone. Welcome to Scootronics workshop again. Second noise on the trot. Right, so I've got my coffee. Got me fag. Happy man. Bit of background music now. Tonight's gonna be a bit of scar, something different. So I'll just get that on. Right, what we're going to talk about tonight? Um, we're going to talk about the teleconverter. I've probably sold about 200 of these units now. I've just made a batch up. I've got about 10 in stock, but a couple of them I've spoke for. Um, they're quite difficult to make, that's why I don't make many of them. Um, there's quite a lot of electronics packed inside that box. And what is the IntelliConverter? The main reason why it was developed was because of the SIP speedos resetting. Uh, with certain types of stators, you only get a, a low voltage on tick over. And that caused the SIP to keep resetting. So that's a bit annoying when you're ticking over and the SIP keeps resetting. So this box will cure that problem. Um, it's got a 12 volt DC output. It's actually higher than 12 volts. It's about 13 and a half volts it is. 13.8 volts. So you've got the, the 12 volt DC output to run the SIP, or you could run a rev counter, you know, a DC EGT gauge, cylinder temperature gauge, basically you can pull maximum about 15 watts from that, I'd recommend no more because you'll just drag it down and we also have a twin USB port which is fully waterproof so there's the US, twin USB port um, what I'd recommend though, if you are running the SIP speedo, I would only recommend you ever plug one USB device in it. Because these new versions, <clears throat> the old version, the difference is, on the old version, the black output wire, you couldn't connect that to chassis or ground. Basically, you couldn't share the same connection as this black input wire. That was due to the circuitry, but the older version was a bit more powerful. But now I've had to do it different, whereas you can use the earth chassis on the black output. It's a bit less powerful, only by about five watts. Uh, and the reason why I've had to change it is because people wanted to use the, um, the SIP fuel sensor with the IntelliConverter. And that wasn't possible with the old one because the the fuel sensor would use the chassis as reference which what it would do it would short out part of the input to this box and then eventually burn it out so i had to redesign it but the trade-off is it's a bit less powerful Anyway, I've got this setup ready to do a full functional test on it because everything I make gets tested before it, come, it goes out. And people always ask me how to connect these up and they are the most simplest things in the world to, to install. If you can put a bulb in, you can put one of these in. Basically, on the input, you've got two thicker wires, which is a black wire and the yellow wire. Let me tighten this up the top. So the black one basically goes to a chassis. And what you can do is, you can connect one of these type of connectors onto that there. And then you could screw that one on where, where you're mounted to your scooter. As long as you've got a good metal contact to chassis, you can mount that to that screw wherever you decide to mount the IntelliConverter. Now, this is the input wire. 
and this goes to the AC source. So again, you can pick up the AC source from various places. You can pick it up from the output of the regulator. You can pick it up from the brake light switch. You can pick it up from the horn, or you can pick it up from in the headset. Normally brown wire in the headset. So dead, dead simple to wire up. Two wires, that's it. Well, it's basically one wire, because you'll put the black one to chassis. And then the output then, you'll have a little plug and socket with a wire on, like that, it plugs in. And what I say to people is, if you're not gonna use the 12 volt DC output, unplug that, and keep, and then keep this lead somewhere safe, in case in the future you decide to put 12 volts on it. So that's basically it, um, the functionality. So it's twin USB port, and it's about 13 and a half volts, between 13 and a half and 13.8. Now, in theory, you can charge a battery up with this. But the only got to, the thing you've got to be careful of is if the battery is really, really flat, that's going to try and supply as much current as it can, and it might shut it down if the battery's too flat. I've charged batteries up on it, no problem. Like I say, it can pull about 15 watts, so it will charge a battery. But, it won't charge a battery if you're running a SIP at the same time. So that, that's the sort of, you know, limitations with it. Now, the way I test these <clears throat> is I will put a 12 volt load to the output. Well, first of all, I'll connect the input to a variable IC source. So I'm just going to connect the input up and I'll, I'll show you the meters and the, the voltage source. So I'm just going the black to EV yellow, it doesn't matter, and the yellow to yellow. So I've got my, I've got my input connected now. I'm going to switch the input on, but I'm only going to input 11 volts IC to it. Now, the USB port lit up, and what you've got, you've got a flashing light at the back. And pe some people think, because it's flashing, it's faulty. That's basically just an indicator to, to say the unit's on. And it all depends what type of LEDs I put in there. Sometimes I put just a fixed one, what's not flashing. But most of them have got the flashing lights in. What that flashing light saying is, you've got 12 volts on the output. If that light's not flashing, you've got no output. So what I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna connect up a 10 watt dummy load and that'll simulate a SIP speed hour being connected to it. So I'm gonna put this on. Right, so now I've got a 10 watt dummy load and I'll show you that. <coughs> There's the bulb, it's 10 watts, and there's the voltmeter. Now that's the output from the IntelliConverter with the 10 watt bulb connected to it. There's my variable input source there, and it's set at 11 volts. So what I do now, I check the unit with an over voltage input, and I'll see what voltage it can go down to and still maintain the output. So my first test is I'm going to switch it up now to over volts, which is on there, which is 13 volts. You probably can't see it right at the bottom. We're still getting 13.67 volts out and the bulb's still on. Then what I'll do, I'll gradually go down on the input voltage to see when I'll start losing power from the output. What I'll do, I'll take this down, I'll take the output down, and then I'll, I'll show you the input voltage source to what level it's at. So I'm at 12 volts now, I'm at 11, I'm at 10, still maintaining a good output. I'm at 9 volts now. If you look at the voltage source, I've got 9 volts going in, but I've still got the ball one 
and still got 12.6 volts so it, it's still maintaining the output what I'm gonna do now I'm gonna go down to 8 volts which you would never get on a scooter minimum tick over is 9 volts so I'm down at 8 volts now I'll just show you 8 volts the lights still on and we're getting 10.7 volts that 10.7 volts will still operate your SIP because the lights still on and we're only at 8 volts input right what I'm gonna do now I'm gonna put the volts back up to 12 volts right so we're on 12 volts now and we're back up on the voltage now 13.69 nice bright light now what I'm gonna do now I'm gonna leave it leave it fully loaded at 10 watts and I'm gonna put this on this is a variable uh, USB um, dummy load so I can dial up on this if I want to pull one amp from the USB port or two amps but what I'm gonna do is simulate a real situation a mobile phone will normally take about between 600 and 600 milliamps to one amp a sat nav will probably take about the same so I've set my dummy load to pull one amp and I'm still gonna leave the 10 watt bulb connected to the 12 volt DC output and now I'm, I'm gonna test then at what voltage level the output starts to drop so I'm gonna plug this in now I'll plug it in, in the first USB board first Okay, I'm, I'm pulling just over one amp and I'm going to plug it into the second one now so I'm plugged in there and we're pulling just over one amp we're on 12 volts input we've still got 13.74 volts there and the light now I'm sort of fully loaded to the maximum I'm going to see what voltage I can have on the input before the output voltage goes down really bad. Right, I'm on 11 volts now. <clears throat> We're still seeing nearly 12 volts on the output. And the bulb's still alight. This is where it'll start to struggle now. When I go down lower, I'm at 10 volts input now. We're still seeing 10 volts there and the bulb still lit up which would mean your SIP speedo would still be running but what it'll occasionally do the actual interleconverter will try and reset itself when the voltage goes too low you're never really going to go down 10 volts once your engine's running you're just above tick over you'll normally see 11 12 volts so I'm going to take it back to 11 volts now and now I'm going to take it to 12 volts so that, that's your normal running speed so I'm back up to 13 volts and the bulb's still alight and I've got the USB pl port plugged in pulling one amp if there's nothing plugged into the USB port obviously you can have less input voltage then now these USB ports are fully waterproof the ones I used to buy before, I had to drill them and seal them with a hot glue because they would normally vibrate to bits. Um, but these ones are fully encapsulated with resin, so them waterproof. So that's basically it for the IntelliConverter. I do do a compact one with no USB ports in. Some people just want this 12 volt DC source to run a SIP speedo or run something else and they don't want the USB port so I'll do a cut down version of this which is roughly half the size of this because there's no USB ports in they're all encapsulated I mean the, the circuitry is here all encapsulated so when it goes it can't be fixed you basically you can reuse the USB ports I've had a couple fail and the ones that have failed are the people some people have had them my older ones and they've connected this output to chassis which shorts out part of the input 
but this new model you can connect the input uh, the input and output to chassis it doesn't matter so that's fully tested now so I'm going to switch the power supply off I'm going to disconnect this and what I do I prepare this lead here I cut the two tin ends off so was, you can't get it to short anywhere I put it back in there and then it gets the famous smallest face put on what the, if you've got any of my items with a smiley face and that means it's been tested so that will go on to there and what I've started doing now I've started putting serial numbers on there so that I can keep track as and when they're made so everyone now will come with a silver um, Scootronic serial number on now like I said I've got 10 in stock now a couple of them have been spoken for um, these are 45 pounds plus postage and really you're getting quite a lot for your money when you think about it it's an anodized CNC cut case um, and I've, so like I said, I've sold a few hundred of them now and they are very very good devices I mean a lot of people have got them if you might have noticed I've still got the rev counter running from last night on that sweep I normally when I test something what I, what I have now is I'll leave it on for 24 hours just to give it a good um, soak test so the rev counter is still happily plugging away and somebody asked me about the size of the rev counters they're basically a 2 inch uh, diameter which is roughly 50 millimetre but the cutout hole obviously because you've got like a screw thread on there it's about 51 and a half millimetre this is I mean some chaps all ordered two of them today I've got a batch coming and I guess they'll be here two, two to three weeks so that's it for tonight I just wanted to explain the interconverter because there's a lot of people ask me how to wire them up like I say, it's really, really simple. If you can put a light bulb in, you can wire one of these up. But basically, these two wires can be put either, either way around, it doesn't matter, because it, it, it's an IC input. But, to save confusing people, I used to put two yellow wires on originally, and then people would say to me, well, which yellow wire goes where? I say, you can put either yellow to ground, and another one to your IC source. So to avoid confusion, I put one black wire on and one yellow. And it does come with a wiring diagram. So that's it for tonight. Like I say, we've got some future videos coming up. We're gonna go into detail about voltage regulators. I'll even show you the trick how you can use a standard regulator to charge a battery up if you want. That's coming in the near future. So I'd like to say thank you very much. If you like what you see, just give us a thumbs up. Write something in the comments if you want to know anything. So thanks a lot everyone. Good night all.